my dear students today we will start a new chapter on fuels when we get up in the morning we want a cup of tea or coffee to start our day so we need fuels to prepare the tea or coffee when we go to our workplace we need some conveyance and for that we need fuels again as petrol or diesel so we can say that fuel as is an important part of our life take the example of a matchstick a matchstick burns and produces little energy but it is not a fuel but if we take the wood and burn it with the same matchstick it will produce large amount of energy and we can prepare tea by burning the wood so this is a fuel but matchstick cannot be a fuel now let us come to our video and learn more about the fuels here we can see i have put some pictures of burning wood crude oil coal and lpg cylinder so they all represent fuels here are more pictures from the crude oil we can see that we can get kerosene oil petrol lpg from the trees we get wood and we burn it to cook the food or in the industry we also get coal from the coal we get coke and here are the coal gas or the dung gas and the cng compressed natural gas these two are eco friendly so these are all the images of the fuels now let us first define the fuel so what are fuels the substances which on combustion in presence of air produces enormous amount of energy in the form of heat and light and if this energy can be utilized for doing some useful work then the substances are called fuels as i have explained already that on burning the wood we can prepare food so wood is an example of fuel similarly coal petrol diesel kerosene cng lpg charcoal they are all the examples of fuels so what does the fuels contain fuels contain carbon and hydrogen therefore we can represent fuels as hydrocarbons hc on burning the hydrocarbons in presence of air they produce carbon dioxide water and enormous amount of heat and this is called complete combustion that means when carbon dioxide is produced the fuel is burnt completely but if it stops at carbon monoxide it is called incomplete combustion and that is not good for us i will explain it later so how to classify these fuels we can classify the fuels into two on the basis of occurrence in nature into two types and the physical state or the state of aggregation so occurrence in nature means how the fuels occurs in nature say for example trees coal and crude oil they are all present in the nature and we can use them as such without processing them so these are called primary fuels but the coke which is derived from the coal petrol diesel kerosene they are derived from the crude oil so these are called secondary fuels so the primary fuels are those which can be used as such without processing them for the production of energy and the secondary fuels are those which are derived from the primary fuels after processing them after subjecting them to special processes we get the secondary or the synthetic fuels so this is the basis of occurrence in nature the other is the physical state how the fuels exist 
in the states, different states. So they are solid state, liquid state and gaseous states. The solid, liquid and gaseous fuels can also be classified as primary and secondary fuels. And in the table I have given along with the examples the various states of the fuels. Solid primary fuel are wood, peat, lignite, bituminous coal and dung. Secondary solid fuel is coke or charcoal. Primary liquid fuel is only one that is crude oil and all the fractions which are obtained by the primary liquid fuel that is the crude oil are the secondary fuels that is petrol, diesel, kerosene. Similarly, the primary gaseous fuel is only one natural gas. But the secondary gaseous fuels are many, water gas, producer gas, oil gas, blast furnace gas, etc. So here is the schematic representation of the classification of fuels. I have put the figures also for the clarification so that you should understand it properly. The primary or the natural fuels that is trees from which we get the wood, crude oil and the CNG are all primary fuels. The secondary fuels are coke, LPG, kerosene oil. So I have put many examples also for better understanding. Now let us discuss the importance or the requisites of a good fuel. So why we are burning the fuel? We are burning the fuel to get the energy to do some useful work. So first requisite is the calorific value. That is how much energy a fuel is producing. We want a high amount of energy. That is the calorific value should be high. So that is the first requisite. High calorific value. Carbon content, it is the carbon which burns to produce carbon dioxide to give energy to us. So the carbon content in the fuel should be high. Volatile matter content. Volatile matter is nitrogen and sulfur. But it is not desirable. So we don't want volatile matter to be present in the good quality fuels because it will not add up to the calorific value. So it should be low. Moisture content is also not desirable because the steam which is produced will go away in the atmosphere taking away with it the latent heat of vaporization. Therefore, it will not add up to the calorific value. Therefore, moisture content should be low. Ash content, the residue which is left after burning the fuel, it will also not add up to the calorific value and it is a minutes. So, we don't want the ash content because then disposal of ash is also important. Therefore, ash content should be low in the good quality fuel. Ignition temperature should be moderate, neither too high nor too low. If the ignition temperature is low, that means when we bring a match stick to the near to the fuel and it catches fire at the room temperature, it is very difficult to control the fire hazard. Therefore, we don't want a low ignition temperature. Similarly, a high ignition temperature is also not good because we keep on burning it and will not catch the fire. So it should be moderate. Flash and fire point should be high because they tell us about the hazards. In the industry, if a small spark is seen, we should have ample time to evacuate the industry and therefore the flash point should be high for a fuel and the fire should be fire point should be at least 10 to 15 degrees apart from the flash point the velocity of combustion should be moderate it should not burn too fast nor too slow and the products of combustion should be harmless now in the beginning i have told that the incomplete Combustion will lead to the formation of carbon monoxide, which is a very, very dangerous, dangerous gas and it is fatal also. Therefore, we don't want the incomplete combustion. It should go to the formation of carbon dioxide, which is much less harmful than the carbon monoxide. So these are the requisites of good fuels according to which we can rank the quality of the fuel and grade it. So in the next video we will be studying about the calorific value thank you very much